Okay, so it's, this is Conduition, this is Rav Shiva, and uh, I wanted to do, uh, like I told you, these videos that I'm making now are going to be geared towards the things I see and kind of analyze on a much deeper level. I think it's kind of almost spiritual at times, but we're going to be looking at, uh, um, what is it called again, a nightmare, hold on. So we're going to be looking at Nightmare as a Child. This is one of the uh, stories from Rod Serling's Twilight Zone. Rod Serling, who I look up, look up to as more than just a creative writer, but more of, I want to say, a seer. Somebody can see into the future. Uh, and we're going we're to get into that in some of his other videos, too. It's, uh, you know, I believe that he was very highly... Uh, endowed with wisdom and also foresight. Um, I really appreciate his in-depth, detailed uh, descriptions of anything he spoke about. If you watch some of his interviews, you'll see that this guy really was not just educated, but experienced, you know, and a lot of wisdom when he spoke. And he really, really thought deeply about things, and I can respect that. Um, that's part of what I do here at Conduition, but I, you know, I kind of blend more of the spiritual stuff. I believe that his stuff is also spiritual in many ways. Like this nightmare as a child, you know, I, I've seen it many times, but for some reason today, I kind of saw it with a different light, a different uh, lens, if you want to say so. And, uh, you know, the whole fact that this woman uh, goes back to her old home after 20 years or, or close to 20 years, does and some trauma that she had was buried deep within her subconscious somewhere. And uh, you know, I can relate with that. I think everyone can relate with something similar to that in some way or another. And, uh, and you know, the child being her when she was a much, you know, a much younger person that's inexperienced, but turns out to be very wise. And, uh, you know, it, it was just a beautiful thing to see the uh, part of her that was kind of like forcing her in a way, you know, or coercing her in a way to try and remember what was that, what had happened at that time. And it was like the child crying out to her in some sense. But it was really fascinating. The, sim the simple fact that you have to think that when it was written, and I thought about this, I was looking at it and I said, what an interesting concept. You know, they, uh, I want to say reanimated, uh, uh, they're probably uh, maybe a better word, but that's how the word that I just use. They reanimated because it, you know, was part of this uh, show. Uh, the idea or, or her as a, as a child that experienced the trauma and she had had this blank spot where she couldn't remember, but the child in her in the subconscious very deeply was used to kind of uh, emphasize that idea. And when you look at that, it's pretty damn deep, you know? I don't think that we all take enough time to really think about how our memories work, what triggers them. Because all these things are neurochemical uh, synaptic, you know, impulses in the brain. They create certain chemicals, you know, all these uh, synaptic impulses. They trigger neurochemical responses in the brain. And that creates, you know, whatever, whatever it creates, happiness, sadness, whatever emotion. Uh, sometimes you get a dopamine effect and uh, that's a great feeling or whatever the case may be. And it's, I believe a lot of times that those also can be uh, uh, intertwined and fused in the wrong ways. Or who knows if they're wrong or right. I'm not one to judge, right? Because we don't know. Everybody has their own preferences. And that's probably one of the ways they're created. Life is such a weird imbalance of things. It's such a flux, you know. And a flux means that it's just consistently changing. Uh, you know, it's in a state of consistent change. It's in a flux uh, state. So I always feel like life itself is like that. So, it, you know, it brings up the idea of karma. How does karma work? You know, I don't believe karma is... Uh, you know, what, a lot of people misinterpret the idea of cause and effect. They would, in their minds, have this idea that it's a linear process. Linear meaning it that it starts from one end and continues traveling in one direction, okay? That's linear. This is non-linear. This goes in and out of time, past, present, and future. That's what I believe karma is. And it's some amalgamation of everything that we've thought, everything that we've done, said, you know, whatever. How we affected people is really what it comes down to. Uh, and I believe it's something to that nature of how that energy goes out into the universe or whatever you want to call it, the matrix. And somehow it creates the future. That's what I believe. Um, 
you know, the karma that we create helps create our future. And in more than one way, you know, I'm sure people have said something similar, probably never like that before, but I like to break things down in conduition here. That's why I created this, because I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to bring this up for a reason. There's been a lot of people that are famous that have used my words, and one of them tried to pay me off like a few thousand dollars. The other one just, you know, took it and ran. But, you know, we live in a world today. The reason I'm saying this is that imagine during the times of Christ. So imagine him... Uh, living in a world where people use his words but never gave him credit for it. Would you have ever heard about him today? Think about it. That's how important this is. Do you understand? That's why I'm saying this. A lot of people bypass that idea, but if you have any kind of sense of a brain whatsoever, you'll understand how deep that actually is. You know, the essence of who a person is is, is what they express. And imagine if that gets lost in translation somewhere intentionally. You know, because other people want to take credit for it. I believe that great people like Christ and others and many other great people were, you know, were, were uh, treated unjust because other people were just jealous of them. It's human nature. You see, uh, whoever it is, a man or a woman, whoever, receiving so much love and care for, from so many people that you're going to try and take them down by every little fault that they make. What does that make you? You know, what type of person are you if you do that? You know, and you have to think to yourself, no matter how bad you are or whatever you did in your past or whatever the case may be, if you don't do that to people, if you don't, in other words, let me explain to you in a much deeper way. If you don't impede a person's process of redeeming themselves, atoning for, for their sins, you know, if you don't do that, then you're not a bad person to me a really bad person is getting in the way of that process of any human being because we're all passing through here in this limited reality that we have this limited uh illusion and we only have a certain amount of time here why would you spend your time impeding another person's process think about that you know it's kind of uh, a very sinister and evil thing to do and uh, some people would want to uh, give moral reasons for their actions but there is no moral stance that would uh, allow you to stop a person from salvation only God can actually do that but the simple fact that people try those things here on earth in this realm it tells you what, you know the type of place we live in well, the whole story of Christ himself I'm not Christian but I am spiritual but the whole story of Christ is another great example of you know, a human being when he was in flesh, in the form of flesh, that lived, spoke from his heart, gained a huge massive following of people, and then people were jealous of him. That story is, uh, I want to say, uh, infinitely timeless, you know? It's, uh, it's interesting. Was it, did I just repeat myself there? Infinitely timeless? Kind of. But uh, you, you get the... the uh, you know the picture what I'm painting here and uh, you know basically what it comes down to is like I said if no one gave Christ credit for his words you would not know who this person was he would not be revered so highly and I think a lot of people and you have so many I believe that there are a lot of people out there probably not as many as everybody else that uh, uh, but there are people with elevated consciousness out there but in the world we live in today they won't get heard because we live in a very dangerous society now where where uh, you know things have changed and got so devalued you know it's just amazing i don't want to get too far deep into that because i don't want to go off topic but you know the more i watch this this uh Nightmare as a Child, right, with uh, Rod Serling, the more I look at it, it just puzzles me and fascinates me how deep Rod Serling's mind had to be to probe these depths of the mind, these recesses, and to find this story. I'm sure he probably had a personal experience as well to be able to get that deeply uh, explicit with it. You know, it's extremely uh, impressive and on many, many levels. You know, I, I everything that he has done, you know, I've been very blown away with it in some way because I like to watch them over and over, a lot of his 
uh, episodes from all seasons and a few favorites that really stand out to me w- one of them I'm going to do is um, is uh, well the real Martian stand up that's one of my all time faves if not the all time fave there's a specific, specific reason behind it it just has this thing you know I'm going to do another video on, on, on specifically that uh, episode but there's that and there's also you know I have something really cool to talk about with uh, Rod Serling's gift of foresight, you know, and uh, you know, I, I, if you guys don't know his story, when he was writing uh, for television, he had problems. With a lot of the producers because they kept wanting to do him to do more commercialized uh, versions of what he had, and he said he wanted, to, as an artist, wanted to leave it just the way it is without adding the commercial. Uh, you know element to it because it would kind of degrade from what the original you know idea was in the first place you know it's like somebody taking like you know the Mona Lisa and saying okay we're going to put Coca-Cola right next to her face and I can understand what he means by that you know that to me that would devalue the idea of what the Mona Lisa painting is if you saw you know a Coke can next to her face or something you know and a pack of cigarettes or you know whatever they want to you know uh, sell you know and and he was very much against the idea of, of uh, you know, kind of tainting his work in some way just for the fact that he would get a lot more money. And he was very, uh, you know, righteous in his stance against the uh, corporate executives and producers that wanted him to do that. So he had problems a lot with, with a lot of these uh, large uh, companies, production companies and producers and all these people. And... Uh, he ended up doing his own thing and that was the Twilight Zone and he said he still didn't get to do it exactly the way he wanted in certain parts because they kept trying to manipulate what he was doing I kind of feel I wish that he would have stayed alive long enough to where we could have actually heard him speak in person especially with today's world how things are set up uh, maybe they'll create an AI with the Rod Serling's memories I don't know who knows or use all his work put it together and you get to speak to him that would be badass if they do that uh, sorry about the uh, the expletive there I just got excited because I thought about what a great idea if they're going to make an AI and make it of Rod Serling but that, then again that would be kind of weird too and I don't think it's something he would condone but uh Guys, I just wanted to make this video to put it out there for you guys uh, to show you how deep some of this I go at some of this stuff with conduition. And if you have any comments, please leave those comments there. I will look at them and answer them uh, if you ask me any questions or anything, you know. And, uh, you know, if you have any episodes you want me to look at, just definitely go ahead and. Uh, you know, leave the name of it or anything else that's it's not just about the Twilight Zone, it's about anything that sparks your mind I- I- into the Twilight Zone, <laughs> you know, uh, where things are kind of out of place. Uh, I think we all get that feeling here on Earth because we're not sure why we're here, you know, none of us exactly. But, uh, guys, I'll leave you with that mystery of the universe there, and I will see you in the next video. Uh, If you really like what I do, please hit that like, share, and subscribe so I can afford the mansion that I'm trying. I'm just kidding, guys. (laughs) No, it'll help me pay my bills, literally. Um, I don't do anything else at this point. I'm kind of bedridden at home for a bit from my neck surgery and still trying to get over it. But um, that's my sob story, guys. And I I may put some violins in the background when I say that. Just kidding, guys. But uh, no, that's the truth. You know, so this is the kind of situation I'm in. So that little like, that little... uh, uh, subscribe will help me a great deal you need to hit that notification bell as well and uh, trust me as soon as they as soon as I'm able to ask your money I'll be asking you for that I won't even care about the like button okay I'm just kidding guys I'm being a jerk but guys I'll see you in the next video like I said hit me up on there and I will answer you back this is Rob Shiva from Conduition I'll see you in the next video have a great holiday weekend and stay safe